The Tories prepare to clash with China, and we talk about the leaked email from the Labour Party. Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the day. I'm sure you've all seen yesterday's show where we talked about uh, the Chinese Communist Party and how the government have announced that they would be banning uh, Chinese imports if they have obviously links to all the dodgy things that they do with uh, uh, forced labour and uh, obviously lack of human rights in China. Things are escalating in Parliament because the Conservatives in Parliament in the House of Commons are kicking off because... The measures introduced by the government are clearly not enough. We have the uh, China Research Group that's been uh, established by the Tory MPs against the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, this, uh, this is a recent group. In, well, it, it started in 2020, especially after what happened uh, since the beginning of last year. And uh, they've come out to actually speak out against what was announced by Boris Johnson and the Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab. Now, firstly, talking about the China Research Group, this is, uh, as I said, a group that's been set up by Tory MPs to promote a debate and fresh thinking about how Britain should respond to the rise of China. Now, there are a number of uh, areas that this group uh, focus on, uh, China's industrial policy, uh, how it actually affects global trade, but also technology, uh, technological issues when it comes to development, ownership and regulation of platforms. Uh, but finally, Chinese uh, foreign policy, obviously, with all the takeovers that they've, they've been doing across the world, this is a major, major risk to the West and our freedoms. So this group is now coming out to actually say that uh, the measures that have been introduced uh, to simply uh, have guidelines to ban certain imports uh, from China is not enough, and we have to go further. Obviously, this will completely anger uh, Beijing and the CCP. Uh, now we are waiting to hear from um, Dominic Robb on this, the, the actual response, because so far uh, we haven't actually heard, we haven't received a proper response from the government, uh, but considering it just happened yesterday. Now this is thanks to Guido Fox that actually reports uh, and it talks about the actual, what's been introduced now by the government is a fresh review of export controls as they apply to uh, Xinjiang, uh, obviously that area with, with forced labour, now, the thing about the lack of human rights in China is that it's not, it doesn't just apply to uh, forced labor and a number of other issues, all the dodgy things they're doing in Hong Kong and other areas as well. Uh, but one thing they've introduced is this new guidance for companies uh, setting out the specific risks uh, faced by companies with links to Xinjiang. Uh, I mean, that's one area, but we are going to talk about this guidance because it's clearly not enough. Uh, it also, obviously, they also have guidance and support for UK public bodies and uh, procurement rules uh, to make sure that you know we, we don't really deal with chi uh, Chinese uh, dodgy dealings. Um, and a minister-led campaign, that's actually a good point about uh, reinforcing uh, the, the need for UK businesses to take action uh, to address the risks that we get from Beijing. And they are going to be doing also financial penalties. Now, the problem we have with this is that a number of MPs, not just Tories, Luckily, we even had some people on the left, uh, Lisa Nandi, Leila Moran, uh, as well as some Tories like Ian Dongan Smith, who've come out to actually say, this is clearly not enough. We have to go further. We have to completely uh, cut ties because, as I said, uh, these measures uh, only uh, apply to forced labor and not all the other issues, especially camps in certain regions. Uh, but also, aside from the review of export control, the, the thing about the compliance for companies is that it's simply a report obligation to comply. Companies just need to just produce a report on their website uh, to clarify if they are dealing with uh, an exporter from uh, China that is a bit dodgy. That's clearly not enough. I mean, it's, it's simply just a label on their website that, you know, oh yeah, by the way, this product is coming from somewhere dodgy. Well, you should just completely stop it. If we are banning um, imports, you just have to be, the, the blanket ban should be bigger and, uh, you know, this pick and mix policy doesn't really work. Now, Ian Duncan Smith has told Guido Fawkes that the government has promised for months uh, to use these powers to go against individuals uh, that are, uh, you know, obviously causing chaos in Hong Kong and other places. Um, but there's actually no statement about taking any action yet from the government. So he is pushing, he and the rest of the Tory parliamentarians are pushing uh, Dominic Robb and the Foreign Office to do even more. Uh, because, you know, it clearly, I mean, it's a good step, as I said before, what we announced yesterday is good and welcoming, 
but it's just the beginning, and the Tories in Parliament are preparing for that. Now, you want some sort of opposition. You want actual uh, push for the government to do these sort of things. The Labour Party are supposed to be there to do that. They care about our country, right? They have different priorities, unfortunately. Zara Sultana is one of the newish Labour MPs who's too focused on these sort of things. Parliament needs a massive shake-up with fewer bankers and more key workers fighting for ordinary people, which is, we could say, it's a fair point. It's a fair point, absolutely. But Zara Sultana, who is the AOC of uh, British politics, she's a 27-year-old MP whose uh, only job after university as a middle-class you know, politico was a parliamentary officer. I mean, if you really want to replace MPs who are out of touch, you know, with society, then maybe we should remove people like Zara Sultana and, you know, replace them with actual key workers. I would rather have a banker who actually is competent and has good ideas uh, and, and you know, some life experience than a, a former parliamentary officer who's obsessed with identity politics. Now, uh, identity politics and fathers and stuff, Tommy Corbyn, the son of Jeremy Corbyn, is now kicking off against... Keir Starmer because Starmer did this uh, speech with a purple background and purple tie and uh, Tommy tweeted that this morning after the election, um, this is obviously Hillary Clinton uh, when she said this, this morning after the election in 2016, Bill and I both were purple. It was a not, not to part, uh, bipartisanship. So he's now accusing Starmer of doing a similar thing as uh, Hillary and Bill. As if, technically speaking, not that I like the Clintons, but what they did is not a bad thing. You know, sometimes stay away from tribalism. So Tommy Corbyn is criticizing, saying, that, oh, how dare you? You have to be tribalist. You know, don't, don't make friends with the Tories. But the, the Labour Party, again, as I said, is not about this. It's mainly about the fact that they're so incompetent and massive hypocrites. These people who are now angry about the fact that the Brexit deal, uh, the provision has actually been approved, MPs haven't had a say yet completely, they're complaining. The same shadow uh, from bench uh, MP who's complaining about this is the same person who, under Labour government, was in charge of these sort of things in trade, and he actually pushed for more provisional uh, deals without actually Parliament having any say. Greg Hans, Tory minister, exposed him. So the opposition complaint that these have been provisionally applied uh, for perhaps a few weeks there's nothing compared to the 13 years that the trade agreements say that signed under the last Labour government has been provisionally applied. And I thought, Madam Deputy Speaker, I thought I'd also check back. I thought, well, presumably somebody in the Labour government at the time might have done something about this. And I checked back and I found who was the trade minister at the time. And it turns out, Madam Deputy Speaker, it was him, the member for Harrow West. Well, that's impressive, isn't it? That's the Labour Party. Absolute hypocrites. Also, they're not really competent because uh, we just got a leaked document, leaked email, thanks to Keith for Fork Stiff. They told, the issue about prisoners and uh, the lockdown and the impact on that, uh, they were supposed to send a press release to journalists and uh, they accidentally forwarded the whole email chain, all the internal conversations, which is a bit weird because uh, part of it is uh, it actually admits that the Labour policy is confusing, it's a bit, it's a bit messed up, and they make some changes to the quotes. So firstly, they, they say that we could stick this uh, at the bottom of the edit, editor's notes, but don't want to put it in the body as, you know, slightly confusing to refer to a different month. Because, you know, each month they say different things. And they also said some here uh, about the fact that this is obviously the external email uh, to the party, Labour Party network, uh, saying that we should, uh, with the pre-December figures, um, to tweak some of the quotes. And they said, fine, yeah, well, we'll tweak the quotes, and they send it. Also, the, the brilliant moment in this email is at uh, the bottom, the actual email that they sent to journalists. They refer to prisoners, they call them prison users. <laughs> what is this? Deliveroo or Tinder? Prison users. It's not an app. <laughs> yeah, so this is the Labour Party. You know, it's their voters. You know, they want to bring them out so that they can vote to the Labour Party. But the Tory party came back, the, the government actually came, <laughs> this is actually brilliant, a uh, government source told Guido Fawkes in response to this, Labour's desire to let loads of prison users, <laughs> prison users, out early under the, you know, the cover of uh, COVID makes uh, perfect sense when you think about it. 
getting criminals out of jail and onto electoral rolls ahead of the local elections would pad their votes very nicely indeed. It would also have the dual benefit of freeing up cell space that should be should it be needed for their MPs, Claudia Webb and Absana Begum, who are soon to face trial for serious criminal offences. <laughs> well done, absolutely well done. But yes, so firstly, I mean, they're going to come out and vote in the local election for Labour, but it will free up some space for other Labour MPs who should go to prison. <laughs> Lock them up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we can't say that these days, can we? Uh, that was a joke, YouTube, that was a joke. Um, we have to wait, allegedly. Uh, so this is what's happening, and it, I don't understand the situation considering the governments are all over the place with their own policies. We have this cartoon, which is brilliant. It's Matt Hancock just randomly picking up policies. What are we going to do with grease and pubs and gloves and masks? It's completely all over the place. They find a couple of uh, friends we reported on this channel a few days ago for going for a walk and having coffee. The police have now apologised and withdrawn the fines for the coffee ladies in Derbyshire, which happened last week. And uh, their local MP, Tory MP, Andrew Bridgen, says that he's delighted for his constituents after an apology from a heavy-handed uh, police. And then, yeah, they've said that having received clarification of the guidance issued by the National Police Chief, uh, yeah, these fines have been uh, now withdrawn. I mean, how hard is it? I think this was one of the easy parts of the measure, if you're allowed to walk or drink coffee. Uh, but also just in terms of travel, uh, where you can go or not, because they keep saying you have to be local. Now, Boris Johnson yesterday uh, went all the way to East London to then cycle. So they took him all the way to East London and then he decided to like cycle around. So there was a, there was a bit of a backlash on this, but again, they don't really, they're don't they now being forced to actually clarify uh, to see, okay, w w what is the guidance on local walks and bike rides. Can we go to Scotland to like ride our bikes? <laughs> now, uh, Charlotte Ivers has also said that the Prime Minister's spokesman had repeatedly refused to say whether it is illegal to go for a walk with a friend while holding a coffee. It says that he will get back to us later. How do they not know? <laughs> it's your regulations. But the Labour Party are not really strong enough to compete against these incompetent uh, whatever. We do have something really interesting when it comes to these measures because the government are now very worried. It's only been a week since the lockdown started. They're saying that, oh, no, no, we're going to introduce more measures because clearly the measures aren't working. It's been seven days. Uh, political strategist uh, Greg, um, uh, Gareth Knight actually said this. He said, uh, there's absolutely no justification for bringing any new lockdown measures seven days after the last lot when the impact of measures cannot be judged for at least 14 days. If I'd broken the rules on Tuesday, had a cough on Friday, ordered the test uh, which arrived on Saturday and posted it on the same day, I wouldn't get the result until tomorrow or Wednesday. So, there's no way they can judge the effectiveness of the current measures yet. If you believe that measures work, then enforce the measures and crack down on rule breaking. It is not acceptable to bring in new measures before the current ones have had the chance to have an impact. It's absolutely right. The government are completely freaking out. You've just introduced the new lockdown. Let's see how it works. Wait for it. And they always say two, three weeks you have to wait. And then if you want to introduce more measures, do it. If, you know, well, that's a whole different debate, by the way. <laughs> more lockdown. Yeah. Let's just wait for that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is what, what I want to mention in terms of situation with China, situation with the Labour Party and Matt, Han Matt Hancock. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Tomorrow we have our uh, weekly video calls with the members of the channel. If you're not a member, sign up today. You get a lot of perks and benefits. And then you yeah, go on the community tab on the channel to sign up for our uh, weekly video calls. Thanks again for watching. I'm Maya TC. I'll see you guys in the next video.